Welcome to Bite Size Spotlight. Today I'm going to unbox the Samsung Gear VR with controller. So I went ahead and got this as part of the pre-order promotion when you ordered the Samsung S8, um, which is a pretty good value since it does cost about $130 retail. So I'm going to go ahead and unbox this and we'll see what we got. So here we are, the Gear VR with controller powered by Oculus. And we'll flip it over to the back. Go beyond imagination. And one thing I noticed on the bottom. Warning, this product contains chemicals known to the state of California to cause cancer, birth defects, or other reproductive harm. Doesn't exactly inspire confidence, but we'll keep going here, I guess. So, open her up here. Go ahead and slide it out here. So, here we've got our main headset. We'll put that aside for a second. And then this is the controller. So let's take a look at the headset here. We'll peel off the plastic. So taking a look at the back of the headset, we have nice foam padding for comfort. Um, one cool thing is you can actually go ahead and remove the padding. So if it wears out, you can get that replaced. And you got your sensor inside the device. That way it knows if you're wearing it, if you pull it off, it will go ahead and pause the video that you're watching. So taking a look at the left side of the device, this is basically just branding. You got Gear VR powered by Oculus. On the right side of the device, you've got your back button, your home button. You've got a little navigation interface here. And you also got your volume rocker. Now on the top of the device you have a dial. What this does is it adjusts the position of the phone. That way if you're wearing glasses or if you need to get a better focus you can go ahead and adjust that here. And here we have the front headset. So we'll go ahead and unlatch this. Take this piece off. Now on the left side you have your connector to plug your phone in. This is a USB-C connector, but I should mention that this also comes with a micro USB adapter, so you can use older model phones. This version of the Gear VR is compatible with the S8, S8 Plus, all versions of the S7, all versions of the S6, and they do say the Note 5. Of course, it is also compatible with the Note 7, but those have all been recalled, and you don't want this overheating in your face. Now we'll go ahead and plug the phone in. So it simply plugs in there, then you get your latch, and it automatically starts your setup if this is the first time using it. Now before I go ahead and start the setup, one annoying thing with this is that you most likely have to remove your phone's case to insert it in here. So that's a bit of a hassle. So we'll go ahead and take the phone out and you'll see it has initiated the welcome. So here's your setup welcome screen, and it's a pretty easy process. Basically, you just have to go through a few prompts, download the app, and you're ready to go. Now, one thing is you actually don't have the cover on while your phone is inserted, and that's for a couple reasons. One, to keep the phone cool, and another, potentially developers may figure out a way to use the camera as part of the VR experience. And you've got your strap. Um, one nice thing is it has a three-point strap, so it goes around your head and over the top, which keeps the device nice and secure. Also in the box is your micro USB adapter, so you can use this with the older model Samsung phones. And we'll take a look at the main controller here. So the controller is a really nice upgrade over the previous VR. You've got your volume rocker here, your home button, your back button. You've got a touch interface here, which is also clickable, which is nice. And what's really great is you have a trigger button on top of the device, which is a really natural shooting motion in games. So that's an excellent feature, all around really nice and comfortable in the hand. Now the controller doesn't use rechargeable batteries, um, just uses regular AAA batteries, but it does come with a set. 
Now taking a look side by side with the Google Daydream, there's definitely pros and cons to both. Um, one thing with the Google Daydream, I don't really like this material, kind of looks like old carpet. But other than that, there's some really nice things with the Daydream. One thing is that it's really easy to put the phone in. The Daydream also has a nice storage strap for the controller when you're not using it. And the phone is not required to plug in, so you basically just pop it in and latch it on top. Now, when using the Daydream, I was actually able to use my Google Pixel with a case on it, so that was a nice thing. I didn't have to remove the case. And the Daydream feels a little bit lighter than the Gear VR, but it doesn't have that third strap, so it does tend to droop. One other thing with the Daydream is I did notice sometimes you get a little bit of light seeping in, whereas with the VR, where with the VR I felt like it locked out the light a little bit more with this additional padding. And looking at the controllers, they're pretty similar. You have your home and menu button here, and your volume rocker is on the side here. The Pixel controller very similarly has a touch interface, which is clickable, but it is missing that nice trigger button that the VR controller has. Now, if you weren't lucky enough to pick up one of these for free as part of a promotion, the Samsung Gear VR comes in at $130 retail, where the Daydream comes in at $80 retail. So a pretty big price difference between the two. But overall, I would definitely recommend both devices. I think it really just comes down to what phone you're using at the time. So if you're a Samsung user, you're probably going to want the Gear VR. Whereas if you own the Google Pixel, you may prefer the Daydream. So just to recap a few pros and cons of the devices. Um, one, I think I do like the Gear VR design a little bit better. I found the Gear VR to be a little bit more comfortable, especially with the third strap that really holds it nicely in place. And I feel like it does a really good job at blocking out the light. And I really like the Gear VR controller. It has a nice ergonomic feel, and the trigger button is a nice added bonus. Now just a couple cons with the Samsung VR. One, the phone doesn't really fit in there with a case, so that's definitely a negative and a bit of an inconvenience. And a minor gripe, the controller doesn't have a nice neat place to store when you're not using it. It just kind of straps to the side. Some pros with the Daydream, obviously the price coming in at $80 is really nice. The device is really light, which makes it comfortable to wear. And the controller has a nice feel, while not as good as the Samsung VR controller. It's still very user friendly, and I like that you can store it in the case when not in use. And just a couple cons with the Daydream. I personally don't like the design that much. It feels a little dated and doesn't feel like this would be that durable in the long term. But that's just opinion. Some people really do like the look. And also, although it's light without having that third strap over the top, it does sometimes tend to droop a little bit. But other than that, an excellent device. So let me know what you think in the comments. Do you prefer one of these devices over the other? Or are you not into the mobile VR headsets and prefer the higher end devices on the market? Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and we'll catch you on the next one.